In a previous video, you learned about the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Now we'll be discussing the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus to problems. Alrighty, let's start with an example just to kind of show you where the second fundamental theorem of calculus comes from. You'll notice that it says capital F of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of cosine t dt, and it asks us to find f prime of x. All right, so it wants me to find the derivative of this answer. So before I can find the derivative, let's actually find the function and then we'll take the derivative of it. So let's just see if we can do this. So when I'm going to do this, I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. The antiderivative of cosine t would be sine t plus c. So that's what f of x would equal. And notice we have to evaluate it at zero and x. And actually, I really wouldn't need to put the plus C. I'll just keep it in for funsies here. So we're going to go ahead and put X in. So I'll get sine X plus C minus, if I plug 0 in, I'll get sine of 0 plus C. And then I'll get sine of X plus C minus the sine of 0 is just 0. So I'll just get minus C. Of course, the C's cancel out. So my function, my capital F of X is equal to the sine of X. So I found what the capital of F of X is. What they asked me to do was to find F prime. So to find F prime, now what I would need to do is actually take the derivative of sine X, which is cosine X. And what I'd like you to notice is that the derivative, it was cosine X, my original function inside my integral was the cosine. What happened was this T got replaced with that X. And that's where the second fundamental theorem of calculus comes from. The second fundamental theorem of calculus states that if f is continuous on an open interval i containing a, then for every x in the interval, this is going to be true. When I take the derivative of an integral, remember they're inverses of each other, so they're going to undo each other, I'm going to just end up with the function inside, but what's going to happen is instead of the variable of t, we're going to have a variable of x or whatever variable happens to be <clears throat> up top. A couple of rules. A is always going to be a constant. It doesn't matter if it's 0, 1, negative 1,000. As long as it's a constant, this theorem will hold. <clears throat> and then when I, the x will always be a variable. All right, so let's try a few problems. Okay, you could always go back to the long way of doing these problems, but I'm not going to. All right, so I would like to find f prime of x. So if I take the derivative of this side, it would also mean that I need to take the derivative. <coughs> I could call it ddx, I guess. We need to take the derivative of this side. So when I take the derivative of both sides, the derivative and the integral cancel out. And um, what I'd be left with is just, so my derivative of f of x is just going to equal x squared over x squared plus 1. And that is it. It's very, very simple. So please do not overcomplicate it. All right, the one thing I didn't check that I should have set, checked in the first place, this <coughs> lower number is a constant and the upper number is a variable. So I'm all set. Okay, example two. Find f prime of x given that f of x is equal to the integral of the sine squared t dx, right? First of all, we are going from a constant to a variable, so I'm all set with that. So when I take the derivative, all I have to do, the derivative and the integral will cancel each other out. So I'm just going to let be left with sine squared. The t just gets replaced with the variable that was on the top, which is an x. And that is all you have to do. <coughs> all right. Little change, though. If the upper limit is not just x, we'll need to use the chain rule to finish the problem. So you'll notice in this problem, our bottom number is a constant, just like it's supposed to be. This top number is actually x cubed instead of x. So let me just show you how we'll work this a little bit differently. Okay, so to get f prime of x, remember when I take the derivative of both sides, the derivative and the integral just cancel each other out. I'll just end up getting 1 over. Instead of t, we write that upper variable, which happens to be x cubed. So it's going to be x cubed squared. And now the way I'm going to finish this problem is times the derivative of the x cubed. The derivative of the x cubed will be 3x squared. And I'm going to put that over 1. Okay, so a few things that I'm going to do to simplify this problem. First of all, 1 times 3x squared is 3x squared. And then on the bottom, x to the third squared, we're going to multiply the exponents. 3 times 2 will be 6, so I'll get x to the sixth. And then I can actually go one step farther on this problem because the x to the second and the x to the sixth will cancel and I'll end up getting, whoops, 3 over x to the 
fourth. So that would be my derivative. A little bit trickier. All right, last example. We're going to again find the derivative of an integral. And I do notice I'm starting at a constant. I'm going up to a variable, but my variable is not just x. So before I'm done, I do have to use the chain rule. Okay, so when I go to take the derivative of both sides, taking the derivative of the right side cancels out the integral. So I'm going to be left with sine. I replace my variable by what's up there, which is 2x. And now I have to multiply by the derivative of that 2x, which is 2. So I, if I just rewrite this problem so it looks a little cleaner, it'll be 2 sine of 2x. And that is all there is to it. So hopefully now you can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus to solve problems.